Hey friends, Jed here. I wanted to talk to you quickly about the five step process that I use for creating paintings. Um, I, I think of it as a framework because it's really something that you can build um, your paintings on. Like one thing leads to the next, to the next, to the next. And it's helpful to understand the way that they work together. So it starts all here with design. Um, that's the first step. Design happens, I have this dotted line here because design happens before you actually pick up your paintbrush. Um, but it will really help you get to the end product. And um, the reason I'm bringing this up now is because I think a lot of times people get frustrated with these certain stages. And if you think back to uh, the Karate Kid, right? Daniel is wanting to learn how to do karate, right? And he goes to Mr. Miyagi and Mr. Miyagi says, okay, but he sets him up doing these chores, right? And, and he's waxing this and he's painting the fence and he's doing, he's sanding the floor and he's doing all this stuff that he doesn't understand. And he comes to Mr. Miyagi and he says, what is going on? I thought you were gonna teach me how to do karate and here I am just doing your chores for you, right? And Mr. Miyagi then, you know, says, okay, well, show me, wax on, wax off. Show me, paint the fence. And then Mr. Miyagi throws a punch at him and instinctively Daniel uh, blocks it, right? And he does the same thing with the painting the fence and he blocks another punch. And all of a sudden he's, he realizes that, wow, what I've gained is actually... Uh, this super, super helpful stuff. And all I thought I was doing was these chores, right? And so you're going to get into this, th these next lessons and they're going to be about uh, thumbnail sketches. And you might think, man, uh, I came here because I want to learn how to paint, not do these funny little sketches and, and all this kind of thing. But I'm just telling you now, if you get this, if you, if you put yourself into this, it will be so helpful for you. You will save yourself a lot of time and a lot of energy. So design is the first stage. That's where you come up with what you're actually gonna paint because you could be looking at a scene that's really beautiful and it doesn't always translate into a nice painting. Our eyes can see the beauty, but when we put it onto a limited little canvas, we have to compose it, we have to put it together. So that's what that is. The second stage is draw. And that's when we take our design and we actually put it onto a canvas. And this can be kind of quick. It doesn't have to be super detailed. Depending on what it is, you know, if you have something that's really detailed or really structured, you might want to do it with a pencil first and then paint brush. But usually I just take my paintbrush and I do my, uh, my sketch fairly quickly. Because all I'm really trying to do at that stage is place objects and place things and figure out, you know, from my design, I had the, the water line was at a third of the way up from the bottom. You know, the, the hill back there was this. There was a tree over here. Whatever it is, the buildings, you just are trying to get the objects and the placement of stuff onto your canvas. And it's usually pretty quick. The third stage is block in. And that means you're going to take the, the colors, the basic colors, and you're going to block them in. You're going to take your values and your colors and you're going to just go, okay, this is you know, match fairly closely this green, this is this over here, this is this. You're not trying to get all the subtleties. You're not trying to get all the variations. You're just trying to get the general gist of it down. This shouldn't take too long, but you're thinking maybe like 15, 20, 25 minutes, something, because you're just trying to cover the canvas. The reason you're trying to cover the canvas with this is because you don't want to work for an hour on one part of your painting and then move over to another part of your painting and realize, oh my goodness, man, my color was off. Or, you know, now that I see it next to this other value, you know, the sky was too dark or this, you know, this thing wasn't light enough or whatever it is. So that's why you do a quick, kind of quick block in. And, you know, you can work on stuff. This isn't a, a rule or a law that you can't ever break, but it's just a general principle because once you get to stage four, that's when you refine your painting. And that's gonna be your largest, uh, longest stage and longest um, time just to work in. And you're gonna be bringing in nuance and subtlety. You're gonna be looking at trying to make something have form. Um, 
you're going to be bringing atmosphere in, you're going to be working on shading and lighting and reflected light and all the stuff that will take your painting from very flat to looking like it's a, a three-dimensional world that you can walk into, right? And even though it's just a two-dimensional panel or canvas there. So stage four you spend quite a bit of time on. Yeah, that's the bulk of your time. And then stage five is to finish your painting. And um, this stage sometimes takes, actually I'll draw a little line right here because there might be a break right here where you need to step away from your painting for a little bit. Often I find that when I'm painting after uh, uh, an hour or two or three, however long I've been painting, I get tired. And you'll find this too, that your brain gets tired, your eyes get tired, you don't see things as clearly as you did when you started out. And you need to just step away from your painting because you're too involved in it. You're, you're tired and you're too involved. And even just a 15 minute walk, a 20 minute walk, maybe setting it down overnight. It might even mean bringing somebody else who, who you trust and has a good eye or you know can spot things. Sometimes it, if you can't figure it out, it might mean that you need, need help looking at your painting. But often when you step away from it and you come back, things that you missed are glaring to you. You know, it's really obvious. Oh, wow, like I didn't realize that that was directly in the middle of the painting. I didn't realize that, you know, this, this little light spot over here was really distracting my eye from my area of interest or whatever it is. It might be harmonizing some colors. It might be whatever. It could be a lot of different things that you see. That stage doesn't necessarily have to take very long and you might walk away from it and come back and say, it's done. I don't need to do anything because this painting is great as it is. And it's, you know, just to uh, quote one of my early teachers, Robert Ginn, he said, it's better to leave a painting 10% unfinished than 1% overdone. And um, oftentimes uh, that, that, can be, that, that can be true. Sometimes we might overwork a painting. So this is a thoughtful stage and it's a stage where you get help if you need to. But hopefully understanding this will be helpful for you as you move into these next videos and into the, your, you know, just understanding the way that you can uh, go about creating a painting. Because if you, if you have a framework to build on, you'll be able to move forward, you'll be able to understand why you're doing these next videos on thumbnail sketches. Because honestly, because it builds on itself, if you don't have a good design, when you go into these stages, you, your chance of having a nice painting down here is gonna be very small. But if you have a good design, you greatly increase the chance of getting something nice in the end. And you'll be able to look back at that design and, and see. So that's what we're doing in these next stages. I hope that is helpful for you and um, it's gonna be fun. Stick with it, put your heart into it, and don't forget to keep going with it after these next lessons. Don't just say, okay, I got it. I understand the idea of a thumbnail sketch and I understand that it's important, but then, you know, you don't do it. Actually put it into practice and it will greatly benefit you. So let's jump into these next lessons and we'll see you on the other side.